Welcome back to Teesside Autodrome for more coverage of the FIM Junior World Series and we're straight into the action. It is the Ovali 110 Cup that we start off with here. Max Robinson and Leo Soliu on the front row of the grid. Barker Jazari and Caden Herring, Leon Simpson and Kian Daly, Ella Mosgrove and Austin Wilton from Dan Tanton and Jasper O'Neill White. Now you may have heard us at the end of race one last time say Leo Soliu was going to get pole position for getting on the fastest lap of the race in race one. Well, right at the end, Robinson was able to pick him it was so close between the two of them so now they will take their battle into race two with Parker Jazari having to start third off we go a couple of wheelies off the line and heading towards us it is Parker Jazari who stormed his way past both men and got himself into the lead ahead of Robertson and Soliu Jaden Herring still there in P4 but Parker Jazari he is absolutely not doing this by halves he started third on the grid charging through to the lead already. That was not the plan for Max Robinson, nor was it the plan for Leo Solu. They did not want to see Cesari coming past them to bag the lead because he won uh, going away last time and he's already stretching his legs here. And it was not the most incredible start for Robinson and Solu, but they were absolutely matched off the line in terms of launch time. Marco Cesari only 55 thousandths of a second behind them off the line. That's how quick you've got to be. Reaction times are very important in these races. Out of hairpin two, Cesari, Robertson, Salyu, and just in the background there, Caden Herring trying to stay with them as they go through to South Bank. Robertson fancies his chances on Cesari. Now he knows he's got to get past Parker Cesari early to try and get in his head. If he lets Parker Cesari pull a second or two clear, that's it, the race is already over. So Max Robinson has got to get ahead of Cesari early to break that mentality. Yeah, there's not much difference between the talent of these riders, there's no doubt. So the dads will have looked at the first race and think, we probably need to make a setup change, possibly in the gearing. This may be a track that some of these riders have never been to before or not had a lot of experience at. So they might be guessing the gearing, but once they've had that first race, they'll have a better idea. Zolliu looking much more confident at the start of this race than he did in race one, and he was able to charge through for second place. So that tells you a lot about what that first race has done to the mindset of these riders. Caden Herring, B4, out of the hairpin, down the Bob Pope straight, and into Wiggles, up towards hairpins one and two. This is a bit of a stalemate at the moment in this phase of the race. You've got to remember that the brakes and the tyres are not quite up to full temperature yet. They're still trying to get the confidence in them. Meanwhile, for fifth position, we've got a great battle going on between uh, Daly and Simpson. They're having a terrific duel, so they're ones to watch as we continue on. solu has got a run here on Robertson, up to South Bank. Parker Jazari settling into the rhythm, though. This is where the confidence rises, and this is where you can really settle into your rhythm. Yeah, they do allow them to use tyre blankets uh, in this championship. However, they tend to come to the grid and then sit on the grid for five minutes and the yeah, exactly. tyres go cold anyway, so I'm not sure what the advantage is. Maybe it's even psychological to make sure you've got that little bit of uh, psychological edge and knowledge in your bike. But uh, yeah, absolutely, as you say, when you're stationary for a long time, all that hard work, all that heat that goes into the tyres just dissipates, especially on a cold day like today when the air temperature is so low. Here comes Solu again trying to make the bid on Robinson. Through to the reverse corkscrew. Why is it called the reverse corkscrew? Well, it's quite simple. It's uh, a complete opposite polarity of elevation compared to the corkscrew at Laguna Seca in California. Whereas the corkscrew in Laguna Seca drops down, it climbs here at Teesside. So it's very much a similar experience for racers, both on four wheels and two. Up to the inside line. This is the move potentially from Ella Mosgrove and has got the run there on Jasper O'Neill White. So Ella Mosgrove making a very sturdy claim there to move forward. Mason Hams is not far away either. As we keep saying, it's not just about the leaders of the race overall. You've got to win your battle, your psychological duel in order to make the race craft come to you. That's how you learn, it's how you develop. Back to the front, Jazari's long gone. And look at that, the leaders are trying to chop their way past Thomas Med, who got a bit of a scary moment there as both Robertson and Solu came through. Solu! Oh, we've had a red flag, red flag. King Daly's gone down. Well, we haven't seen that, but King Daly is down out of shot of the cameras. Oh, so dear, it'll oh, be dear. a red flag. Five laps gone, so we're going to end up with a restart so we're going to have a very short sprint race for the win the medics have done their work 
the riders are back ready and here we go so Barker Jazari wants to get well clear of Robinson Solu and Herring but of course this is the opportunity for the riders to come back at him here we go Robinson with a good launch Solu manages to out drag Herring so as they go through to turn one this is a second chance now for Robertson, Solu, Herring and Simpson. They can get their chance now to go after Parker Chazari. They can really go for something here. So they come off the turn. Look at Solu getting a lot of confidence early doors on Robinson. Clearly he's up for the victory. He knows that he can raise his confidence out of the reverse corkscrew onto the Bob Pope straight and Chazari is still there but they are running out of time again we've seen it twice already this is the third chance Robinson going for Chazari on the Bob Pope straight and he storms past him this is the chance we've been waiting for Parker Chazari is not going to have this all on his own Max Robinson wrestles the lead from him down the straight are you really really sure this is your race I don't think so mate Max Robinson absolutely storms in and takes the lead away and don't forget, guys, this is a severely reduced race now. A very, very short sprint race for the win here. Max Robinson leads it, but can he hold on? Not got far to go. Oh, this is so tough. And look at Solu. He's seen, well, Robinson could do it. So can I. I'm coming straight for him. Parker Chazari, who has dominated the meeting so far. That restart, that red flag, has upset the apple cart. It's changed everything. And Robinson now has a crack at the whip here. Here comes Chazari. Here comes Solu right in underneath him. So Chazari is not going to have this easy anymore. And even Caden Herring fancies his chances there in P4. Oh, big chance for Chazari. Off the turn. Robertson was a little bit slow. That's the move again from Chazari up the reverse corkscrew. So Chazari gets back into the lead once again. But Max, you've done it once. You can do it again. Out onto Bob Pope straight. This is where he did it last time. I'm not sure he's close enough here. Or is he? Is he? Off Bob Pope, straight into the Wiggles. He's not going to get him this time. He's going to need to be daring if he wants to throw that up the inside of hairpin one. And, you know, you just don't have the confidence on the inside, on the second lap, on these tyres. They're going to be too cold to just throw caution to the wind. Bit of a twitch there, though, from Chazari. Off the back straight. Max Robertson has another chance on momentum. Storms in on the inside of South Bank. Chazari chops across him. Oh, this is brilliant racing. This is what we wanted to see. Yes, Chazari has clearly got the faster setup, but having lost the lead on lap one, his confidence needs to regroup. He needs to reset himself. And this is where Robertson and Solu can take advantage. This is not over, folks. Excellent racing from Robinson. Into the last lap we go. Mark Chazari, Max Robinson, Leo Solu. Don't give up, Max. There's still a great chance. The 99 pushing hard here. Mark Chazari, who carries the same number as the legendary Mark Marquez in the world of MotoGP. But Max Robinson, he'll want to put a flake in it on the 99 if he can finish this one off out of the reverse corkscrew. Down the Bob Pope straight. This is where he stole the lead on the first lap of the restart. He's got speed. Has he got confidence? That's going to be the key factor. Here he comes. Charges in on Chazari. And he's back in front on the last lap. Brilliant from Robinson. Now Chazari is going to have to take a gamble or two if he wants to wrestle the lead back. To the hairpin. Out of hairpin two. Onto the back straight. And Chazari, his hand is in the air. He's frustrated. He clearly feels he hasn't got the chance to come back at Max Robinson. Maybe there's something wrong on the bike. Maybe there's something wrong with his confidence. Whatever it might be, he is frustrated. Now trying to chase down Max Robinson. Can he go for it? One final chance out of the hairpin. You're going to need to throw caution to the winds. He's giving it everything. He's on the throttle, but he can't get there. Robinson's in the way. Max Robinson takes the win away from Parker Chazari. Leo Solu in third position. What a brilliant race from Max Robinson. Never, ever, ever give up. You just don't know what's coming. And Max Robinson steals it from Parker Jazari ahead of Leo Solu. Caden Herring in a strong fourth ahead of Leon Simpson. Great riding from Jasper O'Neill White to get through to P6 ahead of Ella Mosgrove, Mason Hams, Dan Tanton, and Austin Wilton. Max Robinson, the hero of the hour. Wow. Welcome back to Teesside. The Mini GP 160 class is up next, and earlier I spoke to the top three in qualifying.
Frankie, P3 at the first round of the season. You happy with that in qualifying today based on your performance so far this weekend? Yeah, very happy. Obviously, there's a lot of CAF riders and in the FIM class and it's very hard to be consistently at the top. And what would be a good result for you this weekend? Podium. OK, well, good luck. Thank you very much. Wilson, Teesside for the opening round of the season. Is this a track you've been to before? Yes, I've been here four times. And you like this track, I guess. P2 today, is that uh, where you thought you'd be or were you hoping for pole? Yeah, it was a roundabout, right. And you can win from there, obviously, can't you? What would be a good result for you this weekend? Uh, hopefully a top three. Tyler, you were looking pretty quick out there today. Pole position, is that what you expected? Yeah, it was uh, really good actually. Uh, we tried to go for a good lap and we got it in the end. And I guess for you, now you're starting pole this weekend, you're only really looking for a win, I guess. Yeah, so hopefully we can get a good start and make the way to the first. OK, well, good luck. Thanks. Here we go then for the Ovali 160s. This is a very competitive race coming up. Tyler Humphreys and Wilson Dilks on the front row. Frankie Watson and Hudson Cooper on the second. Then Chloe Gleason, Dan Stevenson, Josh Herring, Leo Soliu, Lucas King and Ollie Everts. I would guess there is at least five potential race winners in that top ten from this one race alone. Ollie O'Gorman, Leo Hams and Joe Cooper round out the field. And yes, Ollie O'Gorman is the younger brother of British Talent Cup winner. Casey O'Gorman, who came through this very paddock himself back in the day. So plenty of great riders to come in this one. I genuinely think we've got several contenders for the win. Off we go. And it is an absolute cracker of a start. Three wide to the first corner. That's Hudson Cooper. Hudson Cooper's launching forward from fourth on the grid. He has shot through like a bullet out of a cannon. Amazing stuff. Through he comes into the lead of the race. Second is Wilson Dilks. Third place is Tyler Humphreys. And Frankie Watson is struggling to hold back Chloe Gleason. This is an amazing start from Hudson Cooper. He's just shot forward. And look at it. The three riders already absolutely wrestling. Wilson Dilks trying to wrestle the lead off Hudson Cooper in second position. And there is Tyler Humphreys, the man who started from pole position, now currently in third place. We have got an absolute thrill fest of a race coming here. Dilk's trying to get down the inside of Cooper. Watch out for Tyler Humphreys. He's going to dive in on the inside and wrestle second from Dilk's. Brilliant racing from Tyler Humphreys. Now he's up into P2. The man from Brecon in Scotland, now P2. But it is Hudson, Hudson Cooper here that leads. Started P4, but what a start. He was... Uh, off the blocks like something else. Yeah, very but how long is he going to stay in front though, Jake? Oh, Tyler Humphreys is going to come straight back on the inside. It's not going to be long at all. Brilliant from Tyler Humphreys. He settles the deal at the end of the first lap. So that spectacular launch from Hudson Cooper has only got him a net second place now. Meanwhile, the young Essex lady, Chloe Gleason, has done a terrific job off the line. She's now up into fourth place ahead of Frankie Watson, who started on the second row of the grid. Don't forget, watch out. You've got Wilson Dilks coming through to second place. So Wilson Dilks takes on Hudson Cooper. We've already had more overtakes in the first lap and a half than you're going to get out of the average Formula One race. Brilliant stuff and excellent race craft for the lead as Tyler Humphreys takes back possession of the lead of the race and Wilson, Dilk uh, Wilson Dilks has taken back second, fourth position. Watson and Gleason are having a terrific race of it. Watson's just taken back fourth place from Chloe Gleason for the time being. So great racing from those two. It's very, very hard to know where to look at this point. Is it the battle for the lead or is it the battle for fourth place? Because both battles are pretty exciting at the moment, I have to say, out through South Bank. Humphreys, your lead up, then Dilks, then Hudson Cooper, back down to third position after that beautiful move from Wilson Dilks into rib bend. They come out of hairpin four and up through the dog leg. And now Wilson Dilks has got his sights set on the leader, Tyler Humphreys. They come across the line at the end of the second lap. Humphreys, Dilks, Cooper. Then it is Frankie Watson back in front of Chloe Gleason. Sixth position, Josh Herring. And then it is Dan Stevenson and Lucas King. But out in front, an absolutely sensational race developing. Look, Wilson Dilks is eating away at this advantage. Tyler Humphreys is not going to have a dominant victory here at all because Wilson Dilks is absolutely chomping at the bit, trying to get through as he comes up the reverse corkscrew and on to the Pope straight. This is going to be a very tough race for Tyler Humphreys to win with Wilson Dilks in this mood. Hudson Cooper just starting to lose the back of him though, Jake. 
had a good start, but uh, these two have got some pace out front. We had a great three-way battle in the earlier 190 class and the 160 class here proving to be just as good. Out of the hairpin, down the back straight. Tyler Humphrey's actually getting a little bit defensive knowing that Dilks is going to get there. Three different racing lines from the top three riders as they ride through South Bank, absolutely on the perfect lean angle for each rider. They've got three different stances, but it works for each of them. That's what I love about motorcycle racing. You really get to see the personality and the character of the racer on these bikes because you see it physically in their body as they work their way through each apex. They have very different stances and it all comes down to feel. What does it feel from a natural standpoint for these racers? You've just got to pick what feels natural to you. And it's always fascinating. You see very different interpretations of the racing line on these bikes. Up the reverse corkscrew again. Humphreys, Dilks, Cooper, Watson and Gleason still having their little duel for fourth place, although Frankie Watson seems to have settled that battle for the moment. There's a big gap back to Stevenson and Herring, who are still dueling away for P6. Then Lucas King, Leo Hams, Oli Evitz, Oli O'Gorman and Leo Soliu. Trying to dive up the inside. Dilks still fancies his chances, but the fastest man on the road at the moment is Hudson Cooper, a 1.14.3. He's taken three tenths off both the leaders, who were only separated on the last lap by a thousandth of a second. There's nothing between them. Absolutely incredible. Cooper with the fastest lap at the moment, but he doesn't have trap position. This class, by the way, is for riders from 10 years of age. Now, you might be watching this thinking, None of these bikes look like they're doing about 70 miles an hour. I think they are doing 70 miles an hour. You can be on them from 10 years of age. Now, I'm not suggesting Humphreys, Dilks and Cooper particularly are 10 years of age. They're older than that. But the likes of uh, Ollie O'Gorman further back, I can't think he's going to be much more than 10 years of age. I know he's Casey O'Gorman's brother, younger brother. But, um, yeah, interesting, isn't it? 10 years of age on motorcycles that are going this fast. Something's happened to Hudson Cooper's transponder. He's still there in third position, but he's fallen off the timing screen. Now, that could potentially lead to an issue of some kind. I know the transponder is not connected to the bike, but that could be a potential issue for us to worry about later. We've just got to remember that... Uh, Hudson Cooper is actually in third position yeah. behind Humphreys and Dilks. He hasn't dropped out. Now, the timekeeper will place him back in manually when he gets the opportunity. He'll see that he's gone through the line. There will be, generally, there's a manual timekeeper. It keeps a track of all the bikes as they go through, just in case of, of this sort of situation. But you should see Hudson Cooper's name pop up in the timing on the left, back into third place at some point when the timekeeper notices. It'll certainly be at the end of the race because there's nothing the rider's doing wrong. He's not being disqualified from a race or anything. It's uh, an electrical issue. It's a problem with the transponder and it's out of the rider's control. So he will obviously be given his position back again. Now, look how close it's got between Dilks and Humphreys. There's a yellow flag out on the circuit. So somebody has... Uh, gone down or maybe there's a problem with a tire barrier out of position or something but yellow flags we now go through green so whether that's debris or a rider out of the race we don't know at the moment it looks as though all the riders are still on the road so maybe it's for debris and maybe the marshal's just got to move it back out of position and then it's going to be okay again so back into position oh it looks like all sorts of uh, issues with the uh, transponder at the moment because now Chloe Gle oh it's Chloe Gleason Chloe Gleason's gone so clearly that's the reason why we had yellow flags out so Chloe Gleason is out of this race that is very disappointing indeed for her because she was up there in the top five looking potentially on course for a fourth place at one stage so very unfortunate for Chloe Gleason. This is the battle for eighth place. Great pictures, as always, from the drone this weekend, trying to cover this end of the circuit. The wind this weekend is pretty strong, but uh, not strong enough to keep the drone on the ground. And the thing about crosswinds, obviously, on these bikes with these young riders, it can get very hairy if the crosswinds are too high. This is just about what the riders can cope with. Humphreys and Dilks still out in first and second. Hudson Cooper is still in third. Let's not forget that. He is still there. Uh, the transponder hasn't quite updated yet. So now it has. There you go. Frankie Watson fourth. Dan Stevenson in fifth place. Then it's Josh Herring, King, Hams, Evitz, O'Gorman, Soliu. And then it is Joe Cooper. But there are some amazing race battles going on. Check out this one. We've got Hams, Evitz, O'Gorman, 
Leo Soliu is in that mix and Joe Cooper is right there as well. And again, we've said this time and time again, okay, you're not racing for the win, but it's very important when you've got a, a battle between four other riders, you've got to be the one that comes out on top. You've got to be the one that sets the stance. Solio down there in ninth place, Jake. I think you would have expected something better than that. Well, not for a long. problem with the bike. Now up to eighth place, dives through. Oh, he makes a mistake on the exit. He got into eighth place past Leo Hams and then lost it straight away. So yeah, that kind of plays out what you're suggesting, Alan. Maybe he's not quite comfortable with the bike as he should be. So there is the battle for the lead. Look how close Wilson Delks is now to Tyler Humphreys. He is literally spitting out his exhaust fumes as he goes through. There is that battle still for eighth position. Solu has regrouped. He's now coming back for Leo Hams. Through Wiggles. It's fantastic. It's really hard to know which battle to look at. And now Solu is under pressure from Ollie Evitz. Here comes Evitz on the inside. He hasn't quite been able to get there. So Solu still hangs on to ninth. Evitz is very much charging forward, trying to keep the statistics favorable for him in this one. Tenth place is nice. Ninth would be better. Eighth would be even better than that. Yeah, we were talking earlier, Jake, about coming out on top of your little battles. This is important because this might be for eighth place this time, but this time next year, round one of the championship, these riders with extra experience, this could be the battle for the win. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why you want to come out on top of these little battles in the midfield. But a great battle this is. And this isn't like other sports like rugby or tennis or cricket or football where you do all your learning behind closed doors. You are learning on the job under the gaze of the spotlight of the cameras in this sport. It is so tough to deal with. Here come the leaders once again. Humphreys and Dilks. Hudson Cooper, after his amazing electrifying start, is just watching them get smaller and smaller in the distance. This eighth place battle is intoxicating. It's gonna get spicy if we're not careful. Hams, Soliu, Everts, O'Gorman and Cooper still nose the tail. Let's see what Soliu can do. Out of Wiggles into hairpin one, gets close. The trouble is the bike just pulls across where you wanna position the front fairing and that's gonna be very tricky to then come back off the turn. Onto the back straight again. Here comes Oli Everts. Having another chance. Is that Everts now in front, actually? We, we missed that the last time they came round, but Everts had got in front of Soliu. Soliu comes back at him. Everts chops across around the outside. Is that all you've got, Leo? You're going to have to try a much better trick if you want to overtake me, Sunshine. So Oli Everts has worked his way into ninth position at the expense of Leo Soliu. And Oli O'Gorman wants a taste of it now. Here comes Oli O'Gorman on the 88 bike, the red machine, trying to take on the ninth place man, or the tenth place man, sorry, Leo Soliu. Here come the leaders again, and look how close they are. Tyler Humphreys and Wilson Dilks. There's not even enough space between them for an A4 sheet of paper, and we're going into the last lap. Here we go. Tyler Humphreys looking strong. This battle for eighth place is still cooking on. As Evitz lost that ninth place again, I think he might have done. I think Soliu's got him again. So this is so important to just keep the confidence, keep pushing. Leo Hams. He's going to be working hard here to try and shake off Everts and Soliu. And here come the leaders again. Humphreys versus Dilks. Dilks needs a good exit off the reverse corkscrew. Is this going to be enough? He's got a lot of purchase on the throttle. Will he come through side by side? And Dilks takes the lead on the last lap. He's got Tyler Humphreys. Talk about perfect timing. Now Tyler Humphreys has got to try and come back at him. He takes a wider trajectory through airpin one. Can't get back in on the inside of airpin two. Tyler Humphreys having to go offensive now. Wilson Dilks is getting a little bit offensive. Here he comes through South Bank. Can Tyler Humphreys get back on the throttle? Goes the long way round. Up to airpin three. Trying to switch a move. Can he chop back across to the inside? It's now going to be about who accelerates out of the turn faster. Can Tyler Humphreys out sprint Wilson Dilks? They're going to come to the line. It's going to be close, but it is going to be Wilson Dilks by 0.11 of a second. How close is that? And Wilson Dilks snatches the victory from Tyler Humphreys on the final tour. Absolutely terrific. Wilson Dilks wins from Tyler Humphreys. Then Hudson Cooper in third ahead of Frankie Watson and Dan Stevenson. Josh Herring, Lucas King, and in that almighty battle for eighth, it's Leo Hams who gets the position ahead of Leo Soliu, Oli O'Gorman, Oli Everts, and Joe Cooper. What a terrific opening race.
Well, after their epic duel in race one, Wilson Dilks and Tyler Humphreys will continue their battle into race two. Hudson Cooper should be starting third, but will not take the start. Disaster. Frankie Watson in fourth, Chloe Gleason and Dan Stevenson, then Herring, King, Leo Soliu and Joe Cooper to round out the top ten. And then, of course, we have the riders just in behind them. That is Leo Hams, Ollie Evitz, and Ollie O'Gorman will be charging through from the tail of the grid. But the big news, Hudson Cooper, who took the lead on the initial race start in race one, will not even get off the grid in this one. Big disaster. Hopefully, he'll be back for round two at Rara. Off we go. Charging forward, and Wilson Dilks has taken the initiative from Tyler Humphreys. Is that the fast start? And Chloe Gleason into third place. Great start from Chloe. But Wilson, Dilks and Tyler Humphreys are side by side already at the run to turn two. And Dilks is just about able to hang on in front of Tyler Humphreys for the time being. Humphreys has to think about it. Oh, they are so close to clashing on this opening lap. Chloe Gleason there pictured. She's into P3 on lap one. But can you spell hammer and tongs? Because this is going to be another classic, Jake. Side by side again. Tyler Humphreys down the back straight. On they come to the Bob Pope. And this is going to be really tricky through Wiggles. And finally, it looks as though Tyler Humphreys is going to have a chance. He tried to go all the way round the outside into three, down the inside into four. Goodness me, Tyler. That's cost him. That's cost him. He had to pick the bike up there. That's cost him a good, what, six, seven metres at least. And he's probably 15 metres behind now. That is a severe case of eyes wider than stomach. He was so hungry on that opening lap. But look how quickly he's come back to it. Here comes Frankie Watson as well, Jake. Frankie Watson now into P3. He's got past Chloe Gleason. Dan Stevenson doesn't seem to be... Well, no, he is actually in the timing. He's not on the timing screen we're looking at, but uh, he is there in uh, P5, I think. Yes, indeed. So Dan Stevenson... Oh, now actually That's he's lost, P6. lost the place to Josh Herring. So a good start from Herring. Managing to get himself together on the bike. Here is the battle for the lead again, and it is still Wilson Dilks and Tyler Humphreys. These two are joined at the hip, and this is going to be the rivalry throughout 2024 if this keeps up. Wilson Dilks and Tyler Humphreys absolutely the equal of each other, and it's all going to be about who can psych out the other, who's got the confidence, the strength of will, the mentality, and who can... Uh, Basically go for it when the chips are down around the outside. Tyler Humphreys trying to outfox Wilson Dilks. Can he make it work on the inside of the hairpin? Oh, this is terrific. Dilks is still able to hold it. But Tyler Humphreys is throwing everything he can. Bar the kitchen sink at him as they go through. Round South Bank. He's so good on the wider line, isn't he? This is where he picks up a lot of his momentum. Round the outside at three. Can he tuck in for the inside of four? No, he's going to go long way round. Then he'll tuck in. He can get a little earlier on the throttle by doing that because it's not so tight an angle for him to come through. That's why he's going slightly wider because he can get a little bit earlier on the throttle. He's faster than Wilson Dilks on the last lap as well. This is where he can stretch it. Out through Paddock, up towards Rip. Can he go through on the inside? No, not when Wilson Dilks is in the lead. He wasn't born yesterday. I'll tell you what, both these lads have had their Weedabix this morning. Fastest man on the track is Tyler Humphreys. Set the fastest lap on the uh, at the end of the last lap, that is. Two laps gone. Eight to go as they come down Bob Pope straight once more. Oh, he's got good throttle application. He timed it right out of reverse corkscrew. They're going to go side by side into Wiggles. No chance. No chance. Wilson Dilks knows exactly where Tyler Humphreys is going to be. And this is absolutely splendiferous. Watch them as they come through. Off the second hairpin. Onto the back straight. Duck down behind the handlebars. If you can find a little bit more aero. Watch round the outside again, Tyler Humphreys. Look how fast he can go as he runs a longer wine, a longer wide line, I should say. I can't get my worms out. Wilson Dilk still hanging on in front of Tyler Humphreys. Cuts back through hairpin four. But look, Tyler Humphreys gets on the throttle fractions of a second faster than Wilson Dilks, but he just doesn't have the opportunity because Wilson pitches the bike in exactly the right place to keep that door shut. They carry on this battle through Paddock and up to Rib. And Tyler Humphreys will try again to the inside. No chance. Great pictures from the drone as usual as they come up into the reverse corkscrew one more time. This is the battle for the lead. And uh, what a battle it is. Frankie Watson there just keeping a close watch. Now, he's too far behind to impact on uh, the leaders. 
However, talking about impact and leaders, those words in the same sentence, if there is an impact <laughs> exactly. and the leaders go down, Frankie Watson is in exactly the right place. He's where you want to be because how often have we seen it in various forms of motorsport, Jake, the two leaders take each other out and here comes the man in third place with a big smile on his face to take the lead. I mean, this is a Hollywood rom-com waiting to happen, isn't it? Something's got to give. They are coming through South Bank. This is the chance to get into Epi 3, Tyler Humphreys trying to find the good trajectory. So genius the way Wilson Dilks places the bike in the middle of the road. You can't go left, you can't go right. And Tyler Humphreys is really having to rip apart the racetrack in the bid to get past Wilson Dilks. Keep going, Frankie. Third place, you may be a couple of tenths a lap off them, but this could be a win in waiting if these two get too spicy. Here comes Tyler Humphreys on the inside of Dilks. Magic, absolutely magic. Timed to perfection, like a perfect boiled egg on the inside. Gets the run up reverse corkscrew. Wilson, what have you got in response now, my friend? Fantastic racing between the two. Further back, we've got Chloe Gleason in fourth. Daniel Stevenson is fifth from Josh Herring. They ran out of the top six. Frankie Watson. Oh, he's coming there. back at him. Here we go again. He's just going to storm through. Wilson Dilks so fast on the throttle out of the reverse corkscrew. And he's nailed him on the Bob Pope straight into Wiggles. Tyler Humphrey's coming back at him. Side by side again. Oh my word, they are literally millimetres from each other. That's three lead changes now in one lap. It could well be a fourth as they come through South Bank. Wilson Dilks has not given up on Tyler Humphreys yet. This is absolutely irresistible. Definitely the most brutal, the most intense, the most hard charger battle we have seen so far in the season opener of 2024 here at Teesside. This is irresistible stuff. Three lap changes, three lead changes, I beg your pardon, on that last lap, and there's half the race still to go, Jake. This is magic, isn't it? You just can't tell which of them is going to have the best uh, race craft of the other. Back up to reverse corkscrew again. Right, left, get it together up the hill. Such a tough part of the course, this. It's wonderful to watch on these bikes. Dilks hunting down Tyler Humphreys. Right, regroup, go again. Get a good run off reverse corkscrew. They're going to come out the turn side by side. Down the Bob Pope straight. Can't get through. Not when Tyler Humphreys is holding the inside line to ransom. And he goes wide. And air bid three. This is the chance. They're going to be side by side again. Wait, Wilson. Go slow in. Fast out. This is the moment. And Wilson Dilks has got him on the back straight. Brilliant. Back into the lead again. Tyler Humphreys thinks, no, you don't. I'm coming straight back at you. Round the outside again. This is one of the best mini bike races I have ever seen at any circuit, never mind Teesside, down to the hairpin again. Tyler Humphreys comes back at Wilson Dilks. Still, there is nothing between the two of them. Off the turn, across to the D chicane. Right, left, right. Frankie Watson trying to stay with them. Through paddock. Tyler Humphreys so fast through that apex. But Wilson Dilks is in the way. There's nothing you can do. You can't get through. Not this time. You're watching the official Road to Moto GP FIM Junior World Series here from Teesside near Middlesbrough. This is the Mini GP UK 160 race. And what a race it is! Back onto the Bob Pope straight once more. They disappear behind the trees. They come out through into the wiggles. Is this another move for the lead? Just think, 10 years from now, these two are going to be locking horns on the Isle of Man TT or in MotoGP or in Superbike. Up on the inside, Tyler Humphreys mud wrestles his way through on the inside of Wilson Dilks. He's back in front again. How many lead changes is that now in this race? At least eight or nine. Fantastic stuff. I've lost count. That's how good the racing is now. Tyler Humphreys back in front of Wilson Dilks and they've still got a couple of laps at the end of this one to duke this out. Well, I think it's maybe six or seven, Jake, but uh, let's be honest, Donald Trump, he'd definitely call that nine. <laughs> he certainly would. Here they come. Over the D chicane, up to Paddock. Look how close Wilson Dilks is to Tyler Humphreys again. Is he going to play him at his own book? Tyler Humphreys pulls across the racing line at rip. You can't get through on the inside. Up to reverse corkscrew. So close, you practically kiss the tire stacks as you go right, then left, and then you cannon up this uphill gradient. 
Frankie Watson still there in third, then Gleason, then Stevenson, Herring, Soliu, King, Hams, Everts, and O'Gorman, with Joe Cooper still in the mix as well. Good run off the turn from Wilson Dilks down the straight. Can't dive in on the inside of Tyler Humphreys. Goodness me, how do you breathe in the middle of all of this? Never mind us in the commentary box, those two lads down there pitching hammer and tongs around this racetrack. They've got to find a moment to just keep it all together as they go through South Bank again. Two completely different racing lines that they take, two different stances, two different modes, and both are equally as quick as the other. This is all going to come down to who's got what it takes to hold it together. This is a karting circuit, typically for carts, four wheels, but it's a fantastic circuit for these mini bikes, no doubt. And this being the largest, longest karting circuit in Europe, I think it's something like 1,700 metres, something like that. It's perfect for these bikes. Right, this is the first time in the race that Tyler Humphreys has been able to put a little bit of daylight between himself and Wilson Dilks, and this could be crucial. It now comes down to what Wilson Dilks can do in response. He's got to regroup, reset, figure out where he can pitch in, get on the throttle that fraction of a second earlier, and come back. And look, he's already eaten the gap up a little bit there. Three wiggles, up to the hairpin again. Take your time, but you are running out of it. Yeah, Tyler last, Humphreys. Last, yeah, last lap coming, Jake, at the end of this one. 1.13.9 for Humphreys on that lap. Three tenths quicker than Wilson Dilks was that last overtaking move. The straw that broke the camel's back. Is that going to be what it is for Tyler Humphreys now? Will Wilson Dilks be able to have a response? Because we are running very short on time. Coming out of the fourth hairpin. This might just be Tyler Humphreys having got that final thrust and parry and walked away. This is a very tough run now into the last lap. And can Wilson Dilks do anything in response? There's not much between them. But Humphreys does bang in. Another fastest lap, a 113.87. Compared to Dilks on a 113.95. Wilson, it's not over yet. Keep the faith, keep pushing. You might just get one more shot at him. End of Bob Pope straight will be his only chance, I think. He's, he's dropped back, he's a little bit, he's close enough there, it looks like he is, but I think he's gonna be too far behind. We've got a back marker in the way. This could decide the race, Jake. Yeah, this could be key. They've got to time this right. Tyler Humphreys is gonna get held up. Wilson, this might be your moment. They're both going to go long on the back marker. No! Oh, it's won it. It's oh, won it for Humphreys. Wilson Dilks just had a bit of a hesitation there. And Tyler Humphreys was able to get the move to the inside. Surely that will settle it now. It's Re how you deal with the traffic, Jake, isn't it? And yeah. on the last lap there, that, that pretty much decided it there for Tyler Humphreys. Humphreys is going to take a comfortable win in the end. But look, you've just watched two magic warriors around this circuit. They have fought every single corner for this win. Tyler Humphreys takes it from Wilson Dilks, but that's not the headline. This rivalry, this duel between the two of them, is just going to continue to brew until it eventually bubbles over. It's irresistible in 2024 already. This is going to be the championship fight. Tyler Humphreys versus Wilson Dilks. Frankie Watson in a strong third place after a very strong ride. Chloe Gleason in P4 ahead of Dan Stevenson and Leo Soliu, who charged up to P6. Then Josh Herring, Lucas King, Ollie Everts, and Ollie O'Gorman to round up the top 10. There's still a little bit more racing to do. Welcome back to Teesside Autodrome. Our next class up is the Mini GP 160 50 races. Now, the first race actually ended in disaster for Hudson Cooper, who was chasing after that man again, Tyler Humphreys. Parker Cesari was also in the mix. Cesari would retire from the race, and so too would Hudson Cooper in the most dramatic circumstances possible. Here's what happened along the Bob Pope straight. Tyler Humphreys is leading, Hudson Cooper is chasing him down. They go into Wiggles, right, left, and look, the bike just washes out completely. Exit, stage right. Big moment for Hudson Cooper. The red flags came out immediately to ascertain that Hudson was okay. He was shaken and not stirred, but he would take no further part in the meeting. So let's look at it again. Hudson is right in the draft there of the race leader, and it's very unclear at that point as to whether he's actually clipped the curb, but the result is still the same. The bike's already washed out, and goodbye, Hudson Cooper. Hopefully he'll be back in time for Raura. The race concluded on the restart with Tyler Humphreys ahead of Frankie Watson, Travis Shaw in third position.
So heading into race two, the grid is obviously set by the fastest laps of race one. That puts Frankie Watson in pole position along with Tyler Humphreys, then Travis Shaw and Arnie Carr, Stevenson, Herring, Bradley Curtis, Parker Chazari, Chloe Gleason, and Max Robinson in the top 10. And that's going to be a very competitive second race. The rest of the grid is headed by Lucas King and Caden Herring. But the big question coming into this second race is going to be, does Frankie Watson have the ability to take on and beat Tyler Humphreys? Let's find out. Good start from pole for Frankie Watson. Tyler Humphreys is going to run fairly comfortably in the second position and going through in third place. That looked like Travis Shaw getting an absolute belter of a launch. But once more, it is Watson and Humphreys up front. This is very much similar to what we saw in the early stages of race one. Although Frankie Watson is in the head this time, thanks to his very solid fastest lap in the opening race. Is this going to be Tyler Humphreys getting underneath him already as they come out of reverse corkscrew? Down the Bob Pope straight. Hard on the throttle. And Frankie Watson's got legs here, actually, as they work their way through to Wiggles. This is very well lined up by Frankie Watson. Into the hairpins. Composure, keep it nice and planted. And up the inside, the door is open and Tyler Humphrey snatches it away. It's so easy to open that door on the first lap. Frankie Watson just gave Tyler Humphreys a little bit too much of an invitation through there. And as they go through South Bank, Frankie Watson has got to concede the lead to Tyler Humphreys for the time being. And as they work their way through the hairpins, Frankie can still take the positives out of this. Look, he got pole position for this race, which proves he was the fastest rider in race one. He is learning on the job, as they all are, and he is definitely going to be a rider to watch in 2024. Look, he's not letting Tyler Humphreys get away. He's keeping him honest all the way through. This is great work. Travis Shaw there in third place. Marnie Carr, Dan Stevenson in sixth, seventh and eighth. It's Herring, Curtis and O'Gorman. Thomas Bond doing well in ninth as well, ahead of Archie Hooper. So good to see everybody still putting on a great race of it. As we've said before, it's not just about the guys up front. You've got to mix it in the midfield and take as much as you can out of each of these races in each of these race meetings. That's how you learn, it's how you develop, and it's how you're going to get all the way to MotoGP. Here they come. Frankie Watson still pushing Tyler Humphreys. It's not done yet, is it? Travis Shaw still working his magic there in third position. This is a really good opener for Travis Shaw. Taking advantage, perhaps, of a couple of the other riders' misdemeanors. Obviously, Parker Chazari and Hudson Cooper falling by the wayside. But look, that's motorsport. You've got to take the opportunity when it's given to you. And Travis Shaw is the rider that's been able to stay up on the bike, bring it home, get that silverware. It's absolute confidence boosting. And it's really good, solid work from Travis Shaw. Arnie Cart, Dan Stevenson and Josh Herring doing a good job there in their own private battle just behind the podium sitters. But Tyler Humphreys, yeah, look, he's starting to kick on a pace now from Frankie Watson. He's starting to open up the taps. Oh, oh well, wait a minute, Frankie Watson went wide there at the D. So he's, he's dropping out, is he? No, he just made a mistake, but he's managed to catch it back in front of Travis Shaw. Well, I would say then that the win is gone, but second place can still be very much in his own hands. Easy to make that mistake, but fair play to Frankie. He's still a ridiculously fast rider at this early stage of the season. He'll pick up the pieces from that, he'll learn from it, and when we go to Raura in Cumbria, you can bet your bottom dollar he's going to be more confident, more strong, and definitely more rapid. Well, that was the moment that really sowed the seeds of this victory. Tyler Humphreys able to bring it home after 10 very convincing laps. Two seconds clear of Frankie Watson. Travis Shaw able to bring his bike home for the final place on the rostrum and the final bit of silverware from this meeting. Arnie Carr in fourth position from Dan Stevenson and Bradley Curtis. Ollie O'Gorman there in the top ten with Thomas Bond in eighth position ahead of Archie Hooper. Only nine riders brought it to the finish in what was a gruelling meeting for the Mini GP 160-50 riders, who of course will be back next time. In the only other class not fully featured in this programme, it was the Mini Moto Pro class. A small field took part, but this would end up being a tale of two crashes. Effectively, the Caleb Ratcliffe story here in second place going down on the low side through hairpin two. You can see he's absolutely distraught. Now, you might be wondering, why is he not picking the bike up and getting on with it? That's a rule in the championship. It's a safety rule. Riders in the junior classes cannot get back on the bike. The bike has to be scrutinized and the rider has to be checked out by the medics first. This is the replay. Fairly low speed crash and on the low side, so no real damage done, just disappointment for the rider. However, in the second race of the day, 
it would be Caelan Ratcliffe again in the wars, but this time a much more serious impact. Mason Frederick, who won the first race, was leading this one through the wiggles. Down to hairpin one. Caelan Ratcliffe has made his way into second place. That's Max Johnson in third. Joseph Cooper in this one, along with uh, William Round as well. Just the five riders. The Mini Moto classes, both rookies and this Mini Moto Pro class, use the shorter circuit here at Teesside. They don't go left handed after the start and uh, go round the mountain, for example. These Mini Moto Pro bikes are around 10 horsepower, but they will do something like 50, maybe 50 plus miles per hour on a long straight. Now, as they came through towards the end of the first lap, this is where the incident took place. Again, Kalen in second. Big tank slapper goes down. Those of us that follow motorcycle racing regularly know the bikes tend to have magnets. They attract themselves to the humans. Watch this, though. The bike off the tyres bounces back over him. And fortunately, Kalen is OK in the end. Mason Frederick, it was, that took the win in both this one and the earlier race one. Round one of the official Road to Moto GP FAM Junior World Series is complete. Join us for more race action at round two, where we'll be at one of the most popular karting circuits in the UK, Rower in Cumbria, where four wheels give way to two and more Junior World Series minibike racing. Join us then.